What is up, my dogs? It's your boy, Mike Mason. Yeah, we're here for a very special fireside chat. We have an, a very special guest with us. I'm just kidding. It's your boy. Um, man, I have a really fun demo for you guys. Um, uh, I'm going to show how to make encased uh, sand art style tubing, essentially. So it's like a vac stack, but with frit. Um, I've done it with a fade effect. It's going to be cool. Uh, let me take a second to introduce my lovely co-host for the evening, Carrie Stroke. Hello there. Hi. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Kind how of excited to see this. I'm doing yeah. well, thanks. Yeah, um, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Thank Excellent. You. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Cool, cool. Um, so my dogs, before we jump into that, uh, there's just <laughs> like a little bit of uh, housekeeping. Or no, I'm just kidding. It's not even that, yo. We got, okay. Right out the gate, my dogs. Uh, recently, we did an unboxing from the Glass Vegas homies who sent me this box, and I didn't know what was in it. And we opened it live together. And, you know, we're about to do the same thing uh, with a box that says Burn Nation on it. And <gasps> that's that's pipe. That's my pipe classic players. And, um, I, man, I, I recently saw that they announced that this year is going to be the very last pipe classic. That's and true. it's crazy, man. I feel like I was so honored to cover the last one and get to know Tito and May and everybody out there at the Burn Gallery and to hear that this will be the last one. Um, it's crazy. I, 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 I look forward to filming it and it's just going to make it bittersweet. You know, I wish they would have told us after or something, you know, like anyways, um, man, Pipe Classic, if you guys don't know, it's like one of the oldest, if not the oldest, like real, but you know, borosilicate pipe making competitions. And, um, we, I covered, uh, 14, the, the 14th edition. They've made movies about every one. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you have to watch some of the movies. Some of them are hosted by Salt in an alternate persona <laughs> as Ron Burgundabs. And it's just like, you know, it's, um, man, it's so, so great. And, and if you don't, like I said, some of you guys out there are like, oh, fuck yes. And if you're not, then trust me, you'll also be like, oh, fuck yes. All right. So we've almost got this bad boy open and I just, I don't know, man, I can't say enough about pipe classic. I, I, um, I'm still sitting on a mountain of footage because I wanted to let them get their movie out from that year before I started sharing so much. And we're going to share a lot of it over the next year or so. And I'm really looking forward to that. Um, oh, man, it'd be funny if it was totally just a box of packing peanuts. Like, aha, Mike, we got you. <laughs> Sucker. No, I'm just playing. All right, here we go. Oh, dude, it looks like some kind of artwork, too. What What is this, like, amazing vibe in my life where people keep sending me beautiful artwork? Yeah, this is crazy. I don't know what this is yet. Oh, man. let's see it. It's got that feel to it. All right, all right, all right. I know some of y'all are like, Mike, start the demo, but I'm telling you guys, we're here because of the amazing community that's grown around this, the amazing events that have opened their arms to me. Like, I just feel like the luckiest dude alive. And, um, man, if we can just take a second to honor somebody who sent, took a moment to send me something, I don't, still don't know what's in here, but... This is exciting. Yeah. Dude, What? No way! They got. <laughs> oh my God! It's the... they got the. It's, oh, that's uh... awesome. Yeah. Okay. So we shared an episode of this on our thing, and then I did the interview with Slinger, and it was such an honor to be part of their Cyber Pipe Showdown because they had to cancel for the real thing. This is so great. I'm gonna read this at letter later. That uh, keeps some of this private, but this is going on my wall. Um, Maybe right under that Glass Vegas one, and I can just walk past it every day and think of how lucky I am to have people like this <laughs> in my great. life. Huge shout out to Eli and Raj. And <laughs> Raj is the man, dude. Y'all should have seen him with the newest version of the Preston, uh, like the handheld uh, hand torch thing. Um, yeah, yeah. As long as we're giving that shout the outs to. Mind controlled to... torch. No, the, the he has a mind controlled torch. <laughs> <laughs> he, I swear to God, guys, he has a mind controlled torch. There's like this, this device that like, okay. So he has a voice controlled torch. And then from there, he's, he's like a fucking gene. You know, he's like Elon Musk of the glass world or something. There's just no money here. So he's not a billionaire, unfortunately, <laughs> but like, dude, okay. So he'd already made a voice controlled torch with this uh, software that like, I mean, you can talk to it and just watch it on the screen and it's reading out, you know, it's like a voice addiction thing. 
but then it can it can be assigned commands and then he had that rigged up to this whole device that could do all the things to the torch and change the flame and then there's this other device and I'm not pretending it was like you know completely ready for uh the apple store or whatever but like you know like he was saying like you'd think about pizza or some shit and the flame would kick on like when it should you know like but like in general it it used um it's like a brainwave type of feedback device and it would go on your head or whatever and if if you could get good at manipulating your brain waves, I mean, the same way they train people who might be be like paralyzed or whatever to to manipulate certain computer systems, some people use it for meditation to help them achieve brain waves. There's there's basically ways you can modulate your own brain waves. We're not I'm not trying to get into science that I barely understand, but he used it and relayed it to the voice controlled thing such. The guy's brilliant, and uh, <laughs> you trust me, man. You should you should uh, check into his world if you're not familiar. Um, gosh, I wanted to talk about the next big thing for me, you guys. I have the tremendous honor of being a board assistant for the dog, Eric Goldschmidt. And, yo, speaking of Eric Goldschmidt, guys, I figured something out funny today. A little funny uh -oh. story for you guys. <laughs> I was in the Corning Dictionary. Maybe for humor purposes, I don't know. I was just trying to find something that might have fit an idea I had. But anyways, I'm looking at, at the word flame working, and I kind of recognize the torch. It's like a CC, and it's got like this like hardware store bracket L Marver, you know, or whatever. Blade Marver kind of thing. Not an L Marver, like a Blade Marver. It's shaped like an L, but it's a, just an L of metal. And I remember this from like glass line covers with Eric on the cover, you know, and his torch, like, and, uh, and I had to ask him, I was like, yo, Eric, is that you in the thing? Like if people look up flame working in the dictionary, do they find a picture of you? And he, and he was like, he didn't even know it was there, but he, when he found out he had to have a laugh too. And now it's like, that is awesome. That's pretty I funny. Fully, I fully expect him to be boasting like a rapper about this. You know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. I look up flame working in the dictionary. It's me. Oh, you don't know about me, you know? Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look um, up flame working. You find me <laughs> anyways. Um, that's coming up. Uh, it's unfortunately at the same time, essentially as the DFO. Um, and that's a crazy thing. It's like one of the biggest weekends in glass and I'm, I'm sure nobody did it intentionally, but you know, when, uh, the gas conference, we had the honor of doing like their official broadcast in 2017 and sharing flame working stuff. And since then they've just been so nice to me and kind of let me do my thing. And we've been able to share some really amazing stuff. And Eric has been really good to us too. Um, so when they called, you know, it was like, that was a pretty easy decision as much as the DFO is going to be incredible. Um, and I wanted to uh, just share some of the lineup here uh, for this conference because it is uh, pretty awesome. And I actually do have a ticket to give away. So um, if this is something that you're interested in. If you're in the Pacific Northwest and any of these demos, this is all at uh, glassart.org. And you can look through all of this, but let's, uh, I guess it's not gonna let me do all that, but whatever. There's a lot of demos, the digital and analog of glass and ceramics. Some of y'all might remember the, the a cat who is actually making borosilicate that's compatible with ceramic, or it's a ceramic that's made to mix with the boro. And um, that guy's amazing. I wish I could remember his thing off the top of my head right now. But um, this is just there's th we're on just on page one. The gas conference is an absolutely incredible celebration of glass of of all kinds of all kinds of glass working. Chris Hurley is um, going to be doing a demo. Um, Z is given two presentations. I, I glanced yep. through the list briefly earlier. One of them is like speaking on how she creates her art. And then the other one is a flame working. Yeah. Rashawn Jones will be giving a demo. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, man. A lot of people who are kind of friends of the show. We've had Rashawn on and we had Chris on when they did the ASGS flame off here in Colorado Springs where I live now. A big part of why I live here now is because of how beautiful I thought it was when I was here for that show. All of this has had such a 
a, a, a tremendous and positive impact on my life. I really appreciate everybody who's here with us tonight and taking a minute to talk about these glass events. Um, there's just so much going on. Kit Paulson, always amazing. Laura Donifer. Woo! It, it, yep. it, it, this is just it, it's like Coachella for glass essentially um it's amazing and and it's like um you know it, it's just a great vibe they have social events where it's like young people older people people who you look over and and you're just all of a sudden surrounded by every amazing person you ever watched on Corning's YouTube channel for example you know it's it's an absolutely amazing experience um like we're still this this list just goes on and on and on, and uh, it, it's really something incredibly special. Like I said, if you're anywhere near Tacoma this weekend, that it's going to be, Carrie, what were the dates again? The uh, the 18th through. The... Yeah, I posted it earlier. Uh, 18th through the 21st. 18th through the 21st. So yep. yeah, this uh, couple weeks basically coming up. And like I said, we're actually uh, we're blessed to have uh, a ticket to give away to this event. And I'm going to post the details about that, like in Torch Talk and on Instagram tomorrow. So get ready. Uh, I just you wanted can to can also, on... I'm sorry. No, no. I was going to say, you can also, if you don't get the drawn ticket for locals, they have one day tickets. So you can go for a day and get a ticket for just a day. And I think you can do that without being a member. So. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, I have one other thing to announce, man. I did this last week, uh, and I'm going to do it again this week, you guys. I just threw up this this code. It's like 24 hours in my store. So 33% off at my in my shop, MikeMason.BigCartel.com or MikeMasonDesign.com, and the code is FRITFADE. So that is the uh, discount. And like I said, I'm going to leave that up for 24 hours, I guess, till, till like tomorrow at night or whatever. And uh, I, just, I really appreciate everybody who tunes in and makes this a party. It's a big part of why I get to do what I get to do. And I really appreciate y'all out there. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to do before we uh, started this episode and we're just strictly into the tech. Um, there's somebody I wanted to shout out because they are doing really beautiful work with the tech essentially the tech that we're about to see and that's mike shea and uh, you know i didn't learn this tech from him and this came up in our social community and really put my brain on it so i wasn't really inspired by him to do this i've always wanted to kind of figure out how to do like a sand art thing not really so much patterns but you know actual sand art and but at the same token this dude is doing really beautiful work um you can actually purchase it. He sells it, uh, and it's on Lampwork Supply. But I wanted to just share. Uh, I mean, look at this stuff, and it's really cool. And I think he deserves a shout out as somebody who's really doing awesome work with this kind of what we're about to see. And like I said, man, I didn't learn this from him, and you know, it's not like I'm trying to go behind the guy's back or nothing. Uh, it's just he's not the one who inspired me to do this. But I do think he, you know, we should we should take a moment and. And honestly, like, take a moment to find your own thing, you know? Like, it's uh, one of the reasons I'm doing this, like, straightforward fade. You know, I didn't want to do this like what he does. And I encourage you guys to kind of do the same. So, you know, um, like I said, you can purchase all these different colors and patterns. And I really think it's gorgeous stuff. So I just wanted to take a moment to uh, give that guy, like I said, give him a shout out because the stuff's really dope. And, um... You know, people who are my friends that, you know, and, and he himself, you know, he, he would be happy to help if you ask. I'm not the type to go ask people and be spoon fed stuff. And if he'd been on my brain, I might have, you know, and, and it, it's just that's not the path we took. But I wanted to give the guy a shout out and show you guys this beautiful stuff he's doing, because that's like one road you can take with this. I mean, those are two roads, really, like really cool, like alternating patterns. And then, like, just straightforward frit in a tube, man. You can make frit, you can make tubing very easily um, this way. And, uh, but, you know, there's so many other things. I myself, I'm, I'm interested in, you know, scapes and, you know, actual imagery. And I would encourage you guys to take this in your own direction. And, um, 
Yeah. And if you want more info, like I'm just a beginner with this, you know, I figured out a way and I want to share it, but uh, he's out there if you want to ask him for any advice or whatever. So like I said, shout out to Mike Shea, man, that stuff is really nice. And uh, yeah, let's get down to this demo. Let's pop this party off. And guys, um, these sponsors that we're going to see over the next minute or so, uh, they make it possible. Tonight we're, we're sharing something I filmed myself. But very often we're sharing amazing things from our industry and it's an honor to have these doors open to share these things. And there's just a financial wall and these companies pitching in a little bit every month help me uh, get over that wall is what it is. And this isn't a, like a, a profit thing. Uh, I still go into my pocket quite a bit to make this all happen and I take a lot of time away from the studio to edit. So it's, you know, I'm not out here making any money on all this, but these companies, the, the, them pitching in, that makes the, all the difference in the world. It's just, it's just not possible to do this and do this comprehensively and do it in high quality and take the time to you know, really do it right. And, you know, there, there's more we're going to try and do moving forward. I want, you know, everybody's the shorts are all the rage. So I really want to start producing, you know, quicker content for people, for us and for, you know, the artists I have the opportunity to film. All these cats make it possible for me, especially when I've got a daughter in college and, you know, I can't be hemorrhaging all of my money to do this stuff. But anyways, um, let's talk about the very basics of what we're trying to do here. And it's, a, you know, a VAC stack, the, the traditional VAC stack is, you know, putting uh, one tube into another capped off and then the rods go around it and it gets closed off and that air gap gets sealed. Really straightforward. Um, here with Frit, we kind of need to prevent frit from falling through. Um, I'm gonna do this a couple of ways. I'm gonna make a like a barrier of clear frit, but the other way is just like making a one hitter. Uh, some of you guys out there probably made a billion of these, and it's really just a matter of cooking that tube back and letting it condense a bit, you know, with gravity, and then you know hitting it with the, in the L marver or whatever, and boom, you've got a straight tube again. Um, and don't don't close it up too much, you know. Um, my recommendation here is to buy a six dollar pound of clear frit on Lampwork Supply or wherever you you know the clear frit is super cheap and it takes barely any to set the basics of this up. So, um, but don't make that too small, you know. Like the chunky frit will just get in there and, and it'll be good. And God forbid you make it too small, some of that fine frit might actually get in there and just clog it all up. And then from there, we're going to flare that out and connect it to the tube so that the outer tube kind of has this constriction that's not going to really let anything through. We're going to take a few other steps. Um, the other thing that I do that I'm not even sure is in here was I took just a little piece of paper towel and stuffed it into my blow hose boot ahead of the vac. Not much, but enough that it sits in there and just kind of acted as a filter. And, you know, I hit it and made sure it was still pulling through and it really didn't affect it at all. It was just a tiny little tear, you know, and stuffed it in there, paper towel. So that, what that's jacks your, are those? Those are Carla Dona jacks from the gotcha. island of Murano. I hear Elon Musk is going to purchase the island of Murano and invest Ooh, in that's the glass exciting. industry. Yes. <laughs> Every, <laughs> everybody's got every, every corner of the glass world has their Elon Musk memes now. All right, so here we're going to make the inner tube. This is really simple. Just make a round bottom. Probably didn't even need to include this, but whatever. We're going to make a really nice round bottom. We don't want our bottoms to be uneven, as it were. You know, the the what I'm really uh, trying to do here, the reason I would round this out nicely instead of just kind of pulling it to a simple point, you know, is I just don't want anything stressful down there. It's kind of hanging out in the stress zone, so to speak, uh, at the bottom of the whole structure. So I just want to take a moment, just round that out, give that a little puffity puff, you know, to make sure it's happy, you know, it just takes two extra seconds. So that's just my advice there is kind of work clean, especially if anything's going to be in a stressful area. Last thing you need is there to be some something weird down there that gets triggered at the end. So yeah, easy peasy. Round bottoms. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> All right, that's the end, guys. Have a good night. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Hope y'all can figure it out from there. No, no, I'm just playing. And here I just got this ridiculous length of like 38 millimeter tubing. And I'm just, instead of like pulling a point off and then opening a clean hole, I'm just kind of being dirty and gangster about it and uh, just getting it really hot and rounding it down. And that'll make that really thick there. Maybe not exactly even what you want, but at the same token, it also gives you this kind of like heat buffer and kind of keeps everything in its own zone. You just don't want that to be like too out of whack, you know? And now we're going to seal up to that ish. And these seals, you know, it, it it's like it's sacrificial, but it's the same thing I was talking about with that round bottom. I mean, right there, it was almost ridiculous, to be honest with you guys. Like, that bottom is probably not going to fuck around. But, like, this area, uh, this seal, it needs to be, it, it doesn't need to be the prettiest seal. It doesn't need to be, like, the neck of a tube or anything. But it needs to be fucking nice. Uh, it needs to be really hot when you make that seal. You need to give it that tug and that puff. And, like, the inside needs to be svelte. The outside needs to be svelte. All that. Um... Any weirdness there is just the potential place that this thing's going to get weird on you later. So it's um, really easy to mitigate that by just taking an extra second, really getting that seal nice and soupy. And yeah, I just got it really hot, giving it some nice pufferies. And like I said, it doesn't have to be the prettiest seal on the planet, but like it can't be, you can't be having some weird kink on the inside and all that. It's got to be a happy seal. See, I'm just taking some time there, kind of rotating it back and forth and back and forth and giving it some puffs. And um, for the amount of glass that was manipulated there and everything, it's that that's really smooth. It's really smooth on the inside. It's tapered on the outside. Like I said, it doesn't got to be the like the cleanest, you know, it's going to got to be like an Olympic level seal here, but it really does need to be hot and happy and not something that's going to stress out on you later. And then another move that I like to do here, I actually have like a really nice pair of tooling rollers, but I rarely use them because I kind of like this move because I can just step back and put the blow tube into my Elmarver and rotate it, and that's straight, so I'm really able to see uh, if there's any kink there and have it essentially laid straight. So, you know, if you've come too far off, you're going to have trouble with a move like that, but as long as you've kept your seal relatively straight to begin with, that's your chance to kind of really perfect it. So, and here I'm just removing the amount that I want, and then... When I open this hole, um, I like to um, go just a little bit above the diameter of the of the end. Not much, just the tiniest bit, and like I almost achieve that by like putting my jacks like and letting the the diameter of the inside kind of like set against it, and then just letting them spring out the tiniest bit. And it's just going to widen it up you know, almost imperceptibly. But just enough that it makes it a little easier to scoop Frit in there. And for what I ended up doing, I probably could have left it a little bit longer and had like a sacrificial clear Frit zone at the top too. Do that if you want. But I kind of got away without that and didn't really have any issues. So, you know. However you want to proceed from there kind of thing. And we're just going to open this up, remove as much material at a really thin angle as we can so there's not much to really widen up, you know. And yeah, you can th this, you know, you can do this almost any way you want, but like I said, I've kind of got a good flow with that with the jacks and just almost letting their spring action set that diameter and then I'll also when I'm first starting, I'll do it in the Elmarver so it's not getting too wide out the gate, you know, cuz it's easy at that point when everything's really hot to widen it too much. And then see here's where I'm letting the inside kind of set that 
And now it's just got the tiniest bit. I accidentally hit it, but it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm going to give it a little dimple. And see, there's something on that tube that's lighting up, but like it wasn't dirt. It wasn't, I don't know what it was. The tube was clean. It was something in the tube itself. Thanks, Cymax. I don't know what to tell you other than that. Like you can see this like line lighting up on it. It's like not in the finished product. And it was like, I don't know what to say. It's, you could see it lighting up there, and I just wanted to note it because when you start seeing it on the frit, you know, it looks like I, like, left kiln dust on it or something, but it's not. It was some cord <laughs> of something in the clear. And anyway, so I did a clear fade. I just wanted to do something a little different, you know, and not buy 20 things of frit. So, um, I, I have this tool thing. It's made for fly fishing, actually. I got it at, like, Kabbalah's, and it's just like a lazy Susan almost with a ton of holes. And some of them fit that 12 mil blow tube really well. So I just put it into there. And um, essentially that, that was like a 19 millimeter blow tube. And, and I, I jaws this down. And I actually should have gone a little further. I, I jaws off a little more later. Because you only want about as much as you need to fold over to seal it later. So that was actually left a little bit tall. And I was just in the zone. Um... And then here's a little trick. So like I was saying, this is like 38, and then I use this 19. And then I guess that leaves like, um, I forget. It left about 5 millimeters around each one. So I put these 5 mil rods in there and basically use them to keep that tube centered while I put in additional clear frit. And you can just hold it, that's fine, but it's kind of, you know, if, if you're trying to get a big-ass tube, you, you want that bad boy to sit there, right, you know? And you really want it to be even on every side all the way down, so this is one of the ways I figured out to do that. And then I just fill in around them, so there's frit, and then I pull them out. And they pretty much just fall into place, and it'll still move around a little, but knowing that the base is set super centered really makes it easy to, to just keep that thing centered the whole way up. And then once you start tapping frit down, that thing actually gets super solid. Like I thought it would be a little flexible as I went, you know, but no, 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 that thing is really not that flexible at all. Like once frit starts getting in there, that, that tube is not going anywhere to the point where I had no trouble jawsing part of it off later, you know, and hot popping a little more tube off all that. So, <laughs> Yeah, now I'm just removing those rods, and now that thing is, like, really, really centered. And, uh, that, I just, you know, like, I like the idea of that pocket being a, just an identical wall weight all the way around, you know? So, yeah, it's about 5 mil, is what I calculated. I think that was supposed to be 38, but it was coming in closer to 39 or something, you know? So, it was like the 5 was fitting in all around really well. But you can do this with virtually anything. You could make smaller sections, you know, with little tiny art things and, you know, whatever. It's just math. It's just one tube inside of another, and you really just need to take the, the outer diameter and subtract the wall weight times two because you got, you know, it on either side. So anyways, we've got this clear buffer zone. And like, that's all sacrificial. I'm going to melt some, I'm going to melt into a bit of that, but not all the way, just enough to have a nice section of clear tubing on the end, essentially. And then this is a spoon that my dogs found in like a Houston parking lot, probably used for <laughs> God knows what. And by God knows what, I mean dope, not just playing. I don't know. Not by them to be clear, but you know, you find, find a spoon in a Houston parking lot looking off like that. And, uh. You can only imagine the the flames it seen, namely Bix. Oh, I, I wish I remember what the lady said she bought this tool for. In the studio this week, a lady bought a tool in Houston, Texas that was already shaped like that as a spoon. Oh, really? I don't know. I remember what she said it was for, though. Oh. Did, maybe they found it in the parking lot of the glass. Yeah. Store. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I made these blends, you guys, and it's really just like a gradient fade. It's nothing crazy. It's just like 25% one and then 75% the other and then half and half and then the other way around and then the full-blooded color, you know. And here I'm using my trusty Bethlehem torch beating stick. So they're not just for whacking your torch or whatever. <laughs> Is that what you guys call it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
sorry. That's funny. Yeah, I understand people don't like sex jokes anymore, Carrie, so we're going to have to... Oh, cancel me? Be careful about that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Some tricky times out there, though. And I, I've uh, used the liberal power of editing to speed through some of this, if you guys didn't notice, um, just because it's repetitive. And then we're coming in right at the top. And like I said, you know, it would have been nice if I'd left just a little bit more space and I might have added some clear uh, just to act as a buffer. But I really wasn't uh, stressing it. I was like, well, if we lose a little up there, that's fine. But we really didn't. Like, it all went really well and... Um, yeah, essentially what's going to happen next is, you guys, I know a lot of y'all are like, well, how is he going to get it in the kiln? And what I figured out, other people are probably doing different things, but what I figured out was uh, aluminum foil because aluminum foil is pretty much good up to like 1,200 or so. I'm really not, I'm not the expert on when aluminum foil melts. I just know that like it definitely won't fuck around in the time that it takes to bring one of these up in the kiln. So, uh, you know, glass painters will often put aluminum foil down underneath their, uh, like stained glass word. So yeah, just fucking cram that thing with aluminum foil dogs. It's like, I know there's all these like, like a foil blanket or this or that. And you know, people were suggesting all kinds of interesting things in our discussion, but like I said, I kind of came up with this on my own, and I'm, I, I, man, it worked great. I was just like, fuck yeah, all right, go foil. So, yeah, and uh, I don't know. I'm probably going to find some other uses for foil in the shop, to be real, because, yeah, this one's, and it's just, you know, just, just take a moment, pack that stuff in. And I'm telling you from here, like, that, that tube in the middle, it was almost like it was packed in solid or something. Like, right, yeah, you're just and, getting in all the cracks and, and this is fine for it to be clear, you guys. If you use anything bigger than that, it's probably going to be way harder. But this fine frit, like, it really packed in gorgeously. And, and, man, it just, like, out the gate had this, like, sand art look that was totally preserved in the final tubing. And, um, like I said, I, I, th there's there's all kinds of things to be done with this. But man, just this basic kind of gradient, almost like a pixel fade. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, it, uh, like I've, I took a video of it. I went on a little hike down the road at Red Rocks Open Space and took a little video of it in the sun. And you can really just see that how the, how it looked in, in the very end, like once it was totally cold and it, it came out very pretty. And I think there's some exciting applications for this. And here we needed one more tube, right, to uh, seal onto the end after we do essentially a doer seal. Because that tube that's hanging out of the end, we're going to just essentially ream that around and seal the frit in. And then we're going to have to seal up to that. So we need one more blow tube. And it needs to be pretty wide because it's going to seal to that doer seal after it's done. And I round that down just a little bit, but it's still, you know, it's like a, it's a big hole on the end of like 38 or 39 mil or something. So, you know, it's, uh, you need to have a big, and you know, a flare like that, if I've got a tooling roller, maybe I'll go a little faster, but I just want it to be nice and even. So I kind of take my time and like, let it kind of cook back a bit and widen, cook back a bit and widen. And then that way you do, I did, the whole thing ends up really proper. And here we go. This is after um, it came up in the kiln. So it's all hot now. It's all ready to go. You can really see really clearly that constriction in the handle. And just and you can even see some of the aqua frit that kind of made its way through the, the clear. And don't worry, a little's going to fall out here. So yeah, if you're really that worried about it, um, use sacrificial clear at the top. But to be truthful, like... All of us in the shop, like, we didn't even notice any falling out. It's like it's like the dust in the light effect. Like, barely any fell out because of the angle it was at. Like, in the camera, you could see it. So I, I was heating that post, and now I'm just going in at a really aggressive angle. And it was hard to capture because, you know, my camera's just chilling on the bench. It's not like I'm there filming. But um, I just literally, like, kept I kind of just get pushed it back as well, almost like I did the blow tube, and then just gave it the aggressive angle and that all just sealed 
And then I just inserted the blow hose or like the, to the vacuum. So I, there was no vacuum attached at that point. But it's sealed there now. And I'm really just trying to get that end all nice and soupy. And also that blow, uh, the blow tube. It's just like when I sealed up to that other side. Like this seal doesn't have to be pretty, but it damn sure has to be nice and happy. Especially because it's sealing up to this really thick section of glass right there. So Now that this end is so hot, I might have uh, tapped the vac. I think you could see it just right as I was saying that. You could actually, if you like zoom in or if you're watching it on a big screen, you could actually see the end constrict just a little before I even rolled it down. Um, I think I was probably like, I've got my foot pedal on, uh, I got a foot pedal on my vacuum, I should say. So I was like, zzz, zzz, just gave it a quick little zap just to clear up anything there and kind of get it ready to proceed. And yeah, same kind of vibe as before. I just really, I like to get those seals really nice and hot. Give it a nice little puff there. I'll work it in a little more probably. But I just really want to make sure I've got a good, happy, structurally sound seal there, which means that there's no kinks in the inside or, or outside, and they were really hot when they were joined, and that, that nice puff together. And like I said, giving them that little pull kind of just sets the stress such that it's, you know, out a bit. If that makes sense. I'm not the the scientist on this stuff. But when you do that type of seal, giving it a little bit of a pull out and a bit of a puff, these things all contribute to a happier seal. All right. And now we're ready to proceed down. If you guys have ever watched me do a sleeving demo, we've done quite a few of various types at this point. Um, I have a, a sleeving uh, muse, I would say. And it's Juicy J, because he <laughs> say bands and make a dance. And that's really all we're trying to do is make really, really specific bands of heat and stay in them until we know the tube is happy. And like, we know the tube is happy when we can actually feel it being a little bit loose as we go. That means the inside and the outside is hot and happy. And um, I'm really not using anything more than the links for this um, as I fucking smashed the thing. I, I think at that point, uh, I, I what I did, okay, what happened there was I moved my roller and adjusted the torch because I needed, you know, I was ready to kind of just get into robot mode. So I gave it a quick heat with the big torch, but for the actual encasing, I'm just rolling down with the links. And I give it a puff every now and then. But for the most part, I'm just rolling down this thing, and I'll go back with the big flame and reheat just to keep the end happy. But for the most part, the links is all I need for this at this size. I mean, even if it were 50, uh, I would probably use the links for a lot of it. Even like 60 mil solid, I use the links for quite a bit. And then I'll drill in with like a very tight outer flame. But, you know, the, like for this, like... Uh, I have to be honest, I'm, I'm not trying to be like, this shit's easy, dogs, but, you know, that shit was kind of easy, dogs, like, it's, it's, I, I, the frit is so fine that there's just, like, nothing but microscopic space between them, essentially, and the vacuum, it just happens effortlessly, it's not even like you're, like, having to watch air channels like you do with the vac stack, or like I do with the honeycomb encasement, or anything, it just happens, it's fucking easy. It, you just need to stay in the bands until you really, like I said, man, when you can kind of feel that it's a little loose, that then you know the middle is kind of is good too. Um, but it did not take long at all. Like I, I, I sped through some of the stacking, but I left this in in real time just to show you guys how quickly. It's just like the only encasement I've ever seen go quicker was when Kiva Ford sleeved two very thin reticello sections, and he was just like, gah, 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 you know, like the, the, but this. Um, I, just because of the way it's so tightly packed, it's, uh, it surprised me, you know, like it surprised me how tight the center tube was stuck in there. It's like, damn, then this, this shit feels solid. And as I went down, you know, it just, it, it really just kind of went. So yeah, it's not even, um, 
it, there's less complication in, in some ways with this, you know? There's a few extra steps, but the actual encasement is pretty freaking easy, so... And again, you guys, we've got clear frit on the end, we've got constriction, and then one thing I, that you don't see is that I stuck just a little piece of paper towel into the boot on the blow hose so that it uh, just acts as like the last line of defense, you know? And when we emptied it, we found like five sprinkles of, of frit, you know what I mean? Like that... Nothing was really going to get through, but I'm glad it was there because just, like, the tiniest... Like, I'm not even playing. Like, the tiniest grains went through, but... And then, yeah, I like to go back and make sure the part that I previously vacked is happy, especially, you know, it's just... It's really thick. It's thick-ass fucking tubing, so keep it hot. Keep it hot. Keep it happy. And then I like to give it a little puff as I go. It's not necessarily necessary, but, you know... It's just one of those things, man, makes, makes me feel like it's definitely going to be a happier piece of tubing because I gave it a little puff as I went. And yeah, and then right back to the band. You just never go ahead of where you can see that distinct line, you know? So you're creeping ahead at, at you know, microscopic speed almost, you know? Think of like Domino's Pizza Oven, you know, where it just rolls through that motherfucker for 15 minutes straight, you know? It's just like that, you know, like super slow, but it's definitely getting heated. It's just barely moving and you're really staying in these specific bands until you're certain it's time to proceed a bit and kind of initiate a new band. We're breaking up the band. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you see that, like I was mentioning earlier, that line, it's in the clear. I don't know what it is. It wasn't dirt from the kiln. It was something that was in there like when I made the blank and it's just like a flaw in the tubing or something, it doesn't show up in the end product. Thank God, you know, and like it, it just, it looks weird though. And, uh, yeah, when I was watching it later, I was just like, what the heck did I forget something? And like out of the kiln, no way. I'm, I'm like extra anal about kiln dust. I hate that shit. I've got Kevlar sleeves everywhere. I'm wiping that motherfucker like a month. Yeah. I'm going hard in the wiping paint kind of thing. And, um, so yeah, now, like I said, it's, that's just some kind of weird stuff in that too, man. And I gotta say, I've had some weird stuff from Cymax over the past couple of years. It's to the point where like, I used to order nothing but Cymax for like seven years straight. And more recently, it's like, if I can find something from a different company, I'm like, all right, I'm trying that shit. Cause, um, yeah. And then there, there've been like these little tiny scuff lines or like, like, little they just look like little long scrapes and they just they light up and sometimes you see them in the finished product sometimes you don't and uh it's been frustrating you know it's made me have to reserve that tubing for things where that won't matter is what it comes down to hey so someone in chat was asking what your actual vacuum setup is oh yeah let me shout out my dog jason uh, gordon man live free he's got an amazing video uh, in what it's called is the vac stacker. And I don't know, man, he might be mad at me for telling you all this, but this is what we're here at Torch Talk for. Uh, he told me that the <laughs> pump in it, he, when he first found it, it was actually labeled as a penis pump. And if you think about it, that's kind of exactly what we're doing. We're trying to suck this small inner tube to match the outer bigger tube. And, <laughs> I'll just play it, but like... Okay, um, and he has shared the plans on a really cool YouTube video. Um, Carrie, could you f help me find that in, in the Torch Talk group? Uh, just search yeah, Max sure. Stacker. You'll find a post right. from me about it and others with a link to it. But if you search Jason Gordon Vax Stacker on YouTube, you should okay. find it as well. And, um, and he gives the whole plans and how to make it. But mine is actually built into a Pelican case. And he called it the 007 Vax Stacker. And like it's a tiny pelican with the pump like built into a wooden box in the side and, and the foot pedal fits into it and the power thing fits into it. And it all just seals up into the like, I forget what model, but we're talking the tiny pelican and it's perfect for travel. And even though it just lives under my bench for the most part, but and um, and yeah, so here, man, we're getting towards the end. And now that I know all the color is, go is good, I'm kind of being a little more uh, cavalier about it. I think it might have even cracked down there. Because I just raged it with a big-ass flame towards that constriction that got all cold. It didn't matter, though. I was just like, okay, I'll just get that hot. 
And I also didn't care because I'd already vacuumed all the good tubing and, and quite a bit of the clear. So it was like, at that point, I kind of didn't give a fuck what was happening over there. So I was just like, fuck it, I'll rage this shit and get as much of it as I can and then proceed, you know? So it was no big deal. And at this point, all of the good shit is already encased. And we're giving it a nice little puff out there to make sure it's happy. Because I'm going to just get rid of all this shit now. And I don't even want any memory of it being weird up in that, so... We're just going to slice it off ahead of where uh, you can see, like, the clear is just encased now. And you can see which part isn't encased as well. But yeah, just get rid of your sacrificial area over there. And yeah, you know, just take take my example here and, and don't flash that end. Because that constriction and all that frit is pretty cold by then, you know. So it's not ready for a big ass flame. So, no, like I said, it was no big deal. Handle cracks don't scare me. <laughs> Especially since I started doing, um, leaving so much of the pupil out in my Marini builds so that I can see the back end really clearly, you know? Like, I started leaving more of that, even though, like, the handle is destined to crack because it's just a fucked up setup, you know? I just don't care anymore, you know? It's like, I know, I know what's going to come off and what's not, you know? Famous last words and shit, but... <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so I'm going back to that side. Just again, if you've been in one place for a while, go back to the other side. If you're doing this on a lathe, you know, you probably got a Bunsen on the other side keeping it happy and you don't got to worry about this. But uh, for if you're doing this by hand, just don't ever be cavalier about the other side. This is a thick piece of tubing. Um, now, you can pull it out to a bigger diameter if you want. Um, there's all kinds of things you can do once it's fully encased, you know? Um, that's really up to you. I, I was just going to preserve it as like a fat section to hand off to one of my shop mates. Uh, shout out to Tesla Glass and to FYV Glass, Allison Cox, um, and Ethan Cox, man, the dogs. Um, they helped me as we were figuring this out too, man. We discussed uh, quite a bit of this, so... I'm going to uh, hand hand this section off to her. And at this point, like, I've got that back end really happy and out to the diameter that I want. Um, I was giving it a little bit of a tug there and now a bit of a puff. Same reason, just to relieve a bit of stress and kind of bring it out. And then I'm going to repeat that process on the other side. I'm going to puff that out and give it a bit of just a quick round in the Marver, just so we've got this, like super even piece of prep you know that like i'm proud to hand to a shop mate and if it were me i'd probably be blowing one end out to a cone you know pulling the other end out to a neck all those games but you know or just pulling it down to tubing if it's if that's your goal you know but i'm more interested in creating individualized prep pieces than making like these long sections of tubing and then you know that's not my game You can go buy that from Mike Shea if you want. <laughs> like I said, I was talking about him in the beginning, if any of you guys skipped that, but he's doing really beautiful work with Encased Frit. And he didn't teach me how to do this. And like I, I wanted to do this because people in the group asked. But I think he deserves a shout out as somebody doing really beautiful work with this style. And if you're not familiar, you know, you're like maybe you should be just so you don't, you know, be careful not step on a man's toes. He's got some really specific patterns that he does you know that that i think are really recognizable as his and you know i was trying to do something a little different myself with this demo doing the the fade and um it's just something to think about you know this is a kind of a like it's it's what like uh it's like a core technique there's so many things that can be done with it it's like a vac stack you know it's a fundamental way of making tubing you know and like, but at the same token, if one person is doing a really specific pattern, it's the same thing with my honeycombs. I've got these like road patterns that I do because, you know, you go and look at somebody like Ryan Turfs, for example, and his work. And like, I don't want to step on his toes, you know, like this is not, not only one person is going to be doing honeycombs and that sort of thing. But I don't want to make I want mine. If you look at them to be like, yeah, that's probably Mike Mason's because he's the only one who does the colors in those rows that way, you know, and, it, and it's just find your own path. Um, but yeah, I did want to shout that guy out. But we we, sh we we showed some of the tubing. They sell it on Lampwork Supply. And um, 
you know, if you're not the, you know, if you don't want to go through that trouble or if you like the patterns that he's doing, like you should totally check out that uh, section of the shop. And yeah, like I said, I, I didn't learn this from him and I probably wouldn't feel comfortable demonstrating it like this if I had, but I, I do think he deserves a shout out for, um, you know, kind of, uh, showing what's possible with this and, uh, and he's doing really beautiful work. So Anyways, and here, so we've, we've, we've gotten a nice tube on one side, and now I'm just going to clean up the other side. And uh, it's, it's, uh, there's just a little taper to it, and I'm just going to give it a nice bit of a puff out to match the diameter of the other side. Not much, just a little bit. It's like almost bringing it back out to the original diameter, essentially. Like, I don't want to do anything too crazy, and I don't want to make the wall weight different. I just want to give a nice, consistent uh, piece of prep. And yeah, you can see that thing lighting up. It looks like air bubbles, but they're not. Like, you'll see the thing as I rotate it. And like, I'm not like a fucking VFX specialist. You know what I mean? Removing air bubbles. It's like, it, it's something in the clear. And it's thankfully, it doesn't show up in the final product. But it's frustrating when you buy this nice, you know, these nice brands of tubing and are solid and they're weird. And I've had the same thing with like even the, the bigger, the larger diameter round from Cymax these days, the more likely it is to be off. You know, like some of them are like damn near oval. It's like, what the fuck? Paid a lot of extra money for this instead of getting, you know, like shot boro artistic or whatever, where in theory, the standards are m like not as much as like the scientific stuff, you know, they're not as precise, but that stuff has been about as, as precise as Cymax for me lately, but... And here, guys, I'm just, um, I'm, ra you know, rolling it in the Marver and kind of giving puffs and all that. And, like, we have this sticker back in the day. It came from a, a saying from Mattis Cookie where he's like, you can't Marver all your problems away or whatever. And, um, and what that means is that, like, if shit's all wonky on the outside and you Marver it like this to make it look clean, all you're really doing is pushing that bullshit to the inner wall where it's hard to see and even more problematic. So when I'm doing this, like I'm really making sure there's mad even heat and that I'm like acting with really even force and I'm not like, you know, I'm not like faking the funk because if you do that, you're going to distort the, the, the inside wall is what you're going to do. And look at this. Here it is all cold and in the sun. I was really happy with how this came out for this frit fade type of effect and. Like, my next move is I want to do, like, real sand art patterns. I remember when I was a teenager, I went to the Tibetan Freedom Concert and watched these dudes for, like, an hour doing the sand painting. And it's been something I've wanted to mess with for years. And, uh, yeah, man, uh, people asked about it in the Torch Talk community. So huge shout-outs to everybody who was involved in that discussion and kind of helped us reverse engineer an approach to this. And, um, and shout out to all these sponsors who give me pause in my life to take the time to edit stuff like this and go to all of these shows and take that footage and edit it into nice things so that we can have this special time together and, uh, you know, and, and share something that we love to do and maybe open some new doors for you guys. So I'm going to hope y'all dug that demo and yeah, man, I just can't, uh, Shout these companies out enough. We just take a minute at the beginning and end to uh, to really give them some some props. And if you guys deal with these companies, man, let them know. Fresh Fresh Glass companies just come on recently, man. They're making the ISO Shine ninety nine, the bomb is freaking uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol, man. The, the the good shit. They got travel bottles of this stuff. Shout out to the dogs, yeah. <laughs> I snuck them in, man. We just talked about it, but I, I rushed to sneak them in tonight because I really appreciate them. They're they're great dudes. I'm actually rocking one of their shirts too. Shit, what? Bam. Oh, look at that. Fresh as fuck, dogs. And uh, yeah, uh, man, I uh, really do appreciate everybody who joined us tonight. Um, Carrie, were there any questions or anything that I'm missing in the chat? Uh, you know, I don't I don't think so. Okay. Okay. I think Fair we got enough. them all. Fair yeah. enough. All right. Well, you know, I heard there that there somebody. were homies yes. wanted to play games. Is that yes. right? You guys yes. want to play some games? Okay. All right. I'm going to let you, let you talk to Carrie for a second and we'll get some games going mm -hmm. here. 
we're not going to do long with the games tonight. And um, I'm actually, I do, we'll probably just cut that out of the, the thing later with the magic of YouTube editing. So I'm just going to take a moment and um, I'm going to say goodnight to our viewers uh, who don't stick around for game time. I sincerely do appreciate anybody who tunes in and watches this, be it tonight or five years from now or wherever. And man, if you get a chance, dude, share with me what you do with this. Like, I, I've, I'm so excited. There's so many cool things with the sand art concept that, you know, there's a million roads to go down here. And I'm really excited to see what people do with it. So thank you so much to everybody who joined us for the demo. But we're, now we're going to play like some silly games. Carrie, give them a good night before we play some silly <laughs> games. All right. Thank you to everybody. Join in. Thank everybody that got to join in live and and chats with us and everybody perpetually. We'll we'll see you and have a great evening. Thanks for being here. Heck yeah! All right, all right.